Hey everyone, welcome back to Deadhead Today's Little Shop. If you watched the introduction video, I was kind of humming and hawing about like the learning curve and all the stuff that's related uh, to using one of these machines. That was then. This is now. Thanks to Millray CNC, we got an outstanding program that will help you get through all of this and get you started in cutting today, right now, no questions. It's called Easel Pro. So let's dive right in. So once you've made your purchase and you've downloaded this, um, this software, you'll notice that you can select a machine, any machine that um, is made by Melwright CNC. And that simply is because they are now a vendor of uh, Easel Pro, which takes care of all of the handwork and all of the, you know, all the data inputs and all the stuff. It just immediately recognizes your machine, uh, which is super awesome. What I also like is that there's two windows here. So this here is your creation window, which you'll understand in a moment, and you have a 3D representation of anything you will add here. So for example, let's make a, a coaster. So you simply select shapes, let's make a round, and you'll notice it immediately pops up here, which is super neat. And there's some windows here, so you have shapes, and there's some data to be put in here, and this is cut. So what you have is that you have CAD and CAM and two buttons. But we have to tell the machine the size of our workpiece. So in our case, it is 11 and a half by seven by 0.375 thickness, which is 3 eighths of an inch. And I'll explain that very quickly. So it's pretty straightforward stuff. When it comes to machining, it understands that a, an inch is divided by 1,000. And it's really not that complicated. So again, I said this is 3 eighths of an inch thick. So the simple calculation is think of a fraction as a division. So it's 3 over 8 equals 0.375, which is what you have here. And that's it. The same is true, of course with half an inch. So one, for example, over two equals 0.5, half of a thousand. So what we're gonna do again is we're gonna make a coaster. So we will tell the machine exactly what we're doing. So we're gonna go back to shape. We're gonna tell the machine, or the program, forgive me, that the outer diameter of our coaster is three inches. And again, you can see it here, but we have what's called a pocket, right? So we'll go to cut. Again, this is what's usual, what's called cam. So we'll go here, we will select cut path, and we will tell it cut outside of the shape path with a one eighth cutter, which is not the cutter that you have. So we'll have to make a change. So we'll go here to bit, which is your cutter. We will tell it, I made this one up. It's a quarter inch two flute, which is what's, uh, well, you actually, you, uh, you were given a four flute, but this is, it'll make sense in a minute. So now you'll notice this little path opens up a little bit because it is exactly a quarter of an inch. So let's go back. 
So we have to tell it how deep to cut. So again, our wood thickness is 3 8 of an inch. So you just go to 3 8 of an inch. And now you'll notice here, ladies and gentlemen, it's cut through. But when it comes to machines, you can't cut through. You need what are called tabs. So you see the machine, uh, the program rather, already assigns these little things called tabs. And this is something I've already cut with a piece of scrap. And you'll notice there's these little tiny webbings here. These, ladies and gentlemen, are what are called tabs. And they'll just make sure that it doesn't come flying out of there and get thrown across the room, uh, but it still hangs on, oops, to your workpiece. They're fragile for a reason, because you want to be as thin as possible so they're easy to cut. All right, so this path is good to go. So let's add another feature. So again, we'll add, go to the shapes here, add, select circle, and we will move that roughly center. And you'll see how, forgive me one second, how this is already kind of adding our, it's kind of thinking for us, which is super cool. And we will tell it to go deeper. So we'll go to, so now we're working with this shape here. We'll go to cut. I want it to be a pocket, which is what this is called, right? But we're gonna go a little deeper. We're gonna go to a quarter of an inch. And it looks kinda off, right? So we will tell it, oops, forgive me one second. Um, where are you now? We'll just move it into position till it looks just so. And it doesn't look right to me, does it? So we'll tell it it's a little bigger. So we're gonna add, again, half an inch. So again, that is 500,000, so that means it's 2.5 by, oh boy, 2.5. And we'll have to move it back into position by hand. All right, so ultimately, this is what it's gonna cut, plus the tabs. So now we got like our catting and camming done, again, which is done seamlessly it's so easy to use again i'm sure you've spent more time more agony setting up a video game machine but now we're getting to the machine part the actual physical part of the machine so there's a couple of steps i want to mention before we continue so as you can see here this is the main table of the machine this is added this is called what's called spoil board and you can notice it's all scarred up and all torn up because you don't want to do this to your main table. So this is half inch MDF. You can get this anywhere at any hardware store. And for, it's actually very inexpensive and it uh, saves your table from getting all destroyed. So another feature again is what are called limit switches, which actually are micro switches. So this is an add-on or an upgrade that you can buy from Millray CNC that I believe is extremely critical. These switches here, so there's one here, there's one here, and there's one that you can't see behind the Z-axis. We'll get to that in a moment. And this creates or generates a physical hard stop or a machine home. So one thing that I really like about the Millwright CNC Mega VXL is that the router is separate. So it's, it's a separate entity. So you don't have to CAD cam, you don't have to deal with it. It's one button, or well, two buttons rather, forgive me. So there's an on and off switch here and there's a speed selector. So you'll notice that we added the quarter inch cutter that we had catted in, right? And we have to tell the router what speed to go at. So you'll notice I have it between three and four, and in my experience, that is more than enough to cut anything. So this is a virtual representation of your actual workpiece. And if you don't mind, my dear wife, you can pan over here, and this is the actual physical workpiece. I've already drilled holes, I've already screwed it down, into the wasteboard because that's how I do it, but others use tape and all there's all kinds of method of doing this. And I, this is what I prefer. 
So I mentioned uh, limit switches or home switches before because for me, I've been working in machinery for a long time and you want the machine to know a certain point in space and that's where these limit switches really pay off. You, you'll see shortly, we'll tell it to go home, it'll come into this position, it will then know where it is. So that is what's called a machine home or a machine datum. But there's another one, there's only two, there is a work datum. So it will, we also have to tell it, according to our CAD, that corner right there denoted by the pencil, that is a work datum. All right, this is where it starts getting real, ladies and gentlemen. All you gotta do is take the supplied USB cord and plug it into any port inside of your laptop. You'll notice that it immediately recognizes it and this button right here turns green, green for go. So you select it and this is where the homing switches, again, that are an add-on uh, through Milray CNC come in real handy. And you gotta turn the power on to the controller. You'll hear it start, we're good to go. So select home the machine and you'll notice it's kind of bouncing around because it's using those micro switches to fi figure out exactly where it is. It'll always do the Z axis first and then bounce the, uh, you bounce the X and Y to figure out exactly where it is. It is now home. So let's go through the prompts together and see how this goes. So. It says here, measure material. But that's one thing I love about the software. You can't make any mistakes because it walks you through everything. So we told it, the, uh, the software, forgive me, that is three eighths of an inch. I will confirm that because it's accurate. It says, clamp down the material, which we did. So material is secure. Confirm your bit, which we spoke about already. Confirm bit size work zero height so this is where we have to tell the, the mill uh, the router rather the top of the workpiece so i'll have you come over here now i'm like pretty old school and i use the paper method you can get a uh, touch probe and all the stuff i just this is what i know this is how i do this and let's get started so when it comes to work zero, we mentioned that earlier that it needs, the machine uh, the machine and the program needs to know exactly where your work is and it uses a corner or what's called a datum. Now it instructs you here, move the machine to the front left corner of the, your material. It then says, lower the bit to the surface of your material. So the upper surface of your workpiece and this is what's called jog controls. So you can move X, Y, Z, you can move all the axes in a stepping motion, a stepping method. And this is how you control the speed at which it moves. So I was prompted by Easel Pro, we're establishing its work datum. So we're on the corner of the work, on the X and the Y, but we have to establish a Z. Now I, deal, I always use a piece of paper between the cutter and the piece of wood and I carefully step it down until the paper catches. So the work zero has been confirmed. So we use select rather than use new position. And it will ask, I'll raise the bit slightly before you turn on the spindle. You select simply raise bit. The Z-axis will raise up. And there's a warning, ladies and gentlemen, that says never leave your Mega VXL unattended while carving. Always stay within sight of your machine and near the emergency stop button at all times. That's wise. So now it's time to turn on the spindle and put on your safety glasses. Because ladies and gentlemen, please understand you're two eyes away from blind. So please, I know it, it's annoying and nobody wants to do this, but please put them on, all right? So here we go, we're gonna turn the spindle on.
and you'll see this prompt here. The spindle is on. Always cover the e-stop just in case things go sideways and, and select. And then select car. And that one. So it is now doing the pocket cut of your poster. So this is a super neat feature of an Easel Pro. It's showing you the elapsed time and how long it's going to take and how much time is left uh, to complete this cut. I believe this is really neat uh, and it'll help you and when it comes time for production and so on and so forth. So here we are at the point where the pocket cut is done and it is now doing the external contour cut. And you'll notice the Z axis is jumping up and down to cut the tag. Congratulations everyone. You got through your first cut. And I've been at this a long time, and what I believe is that your first cut is your first step into a limitless world that knows no bounds. What you need is a good machine and good software package, and I believe these are well paired. So, anything by Melrose CNC and Easel Pro will get you wherever you wish to go.